Hello, I'm the Grandmaster Ivan Salgado. In this video, I will show you how to play the middle game in the Spanish Chigorn. It appears after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6, castle, bishop b7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castle, c3, d6, h3. Here we are. But has several options to fight against the move d4. The most popular move in the last 200 years, at least, is the move knight a5. Okay, black wants to take the bishop pair, and after bishop c2, black plays c5, trying to gain some extra control on the d4 square. White normally plays d4 here, and here starts everything. Normally, black's move is queen c7, but there is another move that is knight d7. This move we will check it at the end of the video because it's completely different. I will show you why. When black plays queen c7, the idea is to get control of the e5 square. It's just to make it very strong. Uh, but when black plays knight d7, normally the idea is to take on d4 c takes d4, for example in the variation knight bd2, it takes d4, c takes d4, knight c6. And now we are playing some kind of Benoni after d5, knight c5. Because of that, I said that it's completely different. First, we will focus our energies on queen c7 and how black tries to make e5 square very strong. And then we will check knight d7. So, knight bd2, here, this is the main line, and now black has many options. Let's go one by one. At the beginning, like in uh, like 150 years ago, people decided that knight c6 was like a normal move with the idea that white might play d5 or d takes c5. Simply, black wants to force the situation. The point is that white cannot keep the tension with knight f1 because after c takes d4, c takes d4, knight d4, knight takes d4, it takes d4, after queen d4, the bishop on c2 is hanging and the position is more or less balanced. Actually, white should play something like knight g3. So, white now should make a decision to play d5 or to take on c5. Um, now we will check d takes c5. I want to tell you that in this video we will be not so worried about the concrete moves. We will check all the middle game ideas. My idea here is if I can show you all the typical middle, middle game ideas in the chiguri, I will be very happy with this video. Actually, the selection I made is just for that. Not about concrete moves, but about different pawn structures, different middle game ideas. So I think that after this video and some concrete knowledge in the opening, you will be ready to play with white and with black. So first, we will check the strategy after knight c6, t takes c5. We can call it Fisher's strategy. He loves to play like he loved to play like this many years ago. What's the point? After d takes c5, now the strategy is very simple. White should try to take under control the d5 square. And black should try to avoid it. White normally will try some maneuvers like knight h2, knight g4, sometimes even bishop d5. This is white's plan. Black idea normally is try to push the pawn to c4, creating some space for the bishop on e7 to go to c5, and of course other pieces will try to take control of d5, like bishop e6, one rook to d8, something like this. But we will check the games because like this will be much more clear. Of course, knight f1 is very normal. Now we see all these typical ideas. Knight e3 with the idea knight h2. And black has 
two main options. One is to play with bishop e6 and devil, and the other is first to attack the queen with rook d8, queen e2, and now bishop e6 will go to our main lines, but uh, many years ago against, Fitch, against Fischer, some players decided to play knight h5. The idea is very clear. After knight e3, black wants to jump with knight f4, and after queen f1, simply bishop e6, following c4 at some point, bishop c5, knight e3, and black will have a huge advantage. So this is a typical idea. But let's have a look to Fisher games. First, I want to show you one idea that I found. I was really surprised when I was checking this position with the computer, and suddenly computer says g4, like very good move. Maybe you will not find this ideas in the middle game so often, but it's very interesting to know that these kind of moves can, can exist. For example, after g4, knight f4, takes, takes, and now e5, with the idea to play queen e4 and take the pawn on f4. And white is much better. It's not very intuitive idea, but it's working somehow. But okay, this is my idea. Let's check Fischer. So, w once he was playing g3. Just, he wants to play knight e3. Of course, bishop h3 is not so good because of knight g5. Bishop f1, queen h5, bishop g5, bishop g5, f6, rook f1, f takes, queen takes. And white is slightly better. At some point, maybe this bishop is entering d1, g4, and making use of the weak squares in e6. Who knows? This move g3 is very typical in this kind of positions, and we should always uh, pay attention to the tactics with knight g5 after bishop h3. So here, black decided simply to protect with g6. And now Fischer makes a very logical move, it's h4. The pawn is not hanging, and at some point white can jump with knight to g5 and take with, g with h pawn if black wants to give the bishop. The f will follow bishop e6, very normal move, and knight e3. Black decided to play f6, I'm not sure if it's the best, but actually positional the 95 is coming and it's really difficult to find a move for black already after 18 moves and actually looks like black did nothing wrong but sometimes it happens f6 and now Fischer decided to play 95 which is a very interesting idea the point is that after bishop d5 it takes d5 rook d5 now strong move a4 and after rook b8, take on b5, take on b5, and c4. And then white is taking on b5 because b takes c4, queen c4, white is winning the rook. And white is much, much better. So knight d5, we can say that it was a very good move. And black decided to play queen b7. And now we have one of the... This is very typical feature. No, 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 everyone will play like this, but he liked it. He took on e7. I'm not sure if this is the best, best move. Probably I would like something like knight h2 first, because I ha highly doubt that black can take on d5, because too many weak squares, and only s m there should be some tactical possibility here. a4, it's a positional move that is quite good. And another move is computer move that actually is quite difficult to play, but makes some sense. That is to play g4, and after knight g7, h5. And we are making all the white squares weak. And look at our bishops. They are cutting the position. This is something I like very much. And actually, the position is extremely difficult for black. But Fischer, as he says, a bishop is even better than the best knight. So he normally did these kind of things. He took, and now knight h2. And we see how he starts the same route for the knight. Very logical. 
black play knight g7, and knight g4, c4, and he played queen f3. He's threatening on f6, and he wants to play knight e3 and d5. Very easy plan. Black gave the other bishop, queen g4, knight e6, and now extremely logical game from Fischer, h5. His idea is if black plays g5, then he will have two possibilities in the future, to play with f4, or at some point to improve the bishop from d1, g4. But of course, first he will play bishop p3, then rook d1, will exchange some pieces, and will try to use the weaknesses in the future. Black played king h8 here, and Fischer very calm played king g2, g5, and now bishop e3. Here he gave some tactical possibilities, I'm, I'm not so sure I will give them. Maybe here was better something else, but it's good enough. Knight f4, and he played king h2. Simple developing, and knight d3, take, and c takes d3, and rook d1. Very simple. Now he will try to place all the pieces, all the rooks on the d-line and put pressure on the d3. Pawn. Black play rook d7, rook d2, knight a5, b3, boy knight c4. All the moves extremely easy. Queen d6, rook a d1, rook e8, and now little trick. Rook d3, queen d3, queen d7. And actually, Bisgear with Black decided to resign this position with Fischer in 1963. Actually, this is a very clean game from Fischer. I like it very much. He's showing us all the ideas in this position. Of course, we'll have a look to some other games here. But actually, this is a game that deserves to be remembered because all the ideas are extremely clear. Instead of G3, there is the possibility a4 first, rook b8, a takes b5, a takes b5, and g3 now. It's a bit similar, but with this pawn's exchange. You know who was playing white here? Again, Fischer. The funny thing is that the, he played this game three years before the previous one. I showed you actually the best one before. So, like this, we will see what he learned from the previous game. After g3, black played g6, very similar, h4, bishop e6, and knight e3. It's very, very similar, almost the same game. So, sometimes people say that, oh, Fischer was so talented. Yes, but so much, such a hard work behind him. He developed this system by himself. He knew it extremely well. So the game was knight e3, c4, and knight e5. Very easy idea. Bishop takes on d5, a takes d5, and knight a5. And once again, Fischer goes for knight g4, trying to get the other bishop. Bishop takes, queen g4, knight b3, bishop takes, c takes, and bishop e3. Yes, this is very, very similar. I'm sure that if you knew this game, the later one you would play almost the same than Fischer. So, after bishop e3, the position is very good, but it's very nice to check it till the end. Rook a8, he decides to take, and take the d-line, trying to play some rook d7 at some point. Black plays queen c6, and rook d5, attacking b5, e5, everything. Now black decides to play f5 to get some counterplay, but of course it's nothing special. Now after queen d1, the rook will enter on d7 at some point, and the queen is taking on b3. So two threats at the same time, we should always look for this kind of moves. Black played f4, I mean Fischer took, it takes, and queen b3, just an intermediate move. Maybe some sharpest player will have played bishop c5, but I'm sure that Fischer was calm enough, and he thought that he will win the endgame without any problem. After queen c4, takes, b takes, bishop d4, f3, and now very interesting move actually, bishop e3. He doesn't want to give any kind of counterplay with knight f4, knight e2. Of course every move is winning, but it's better to play the most accurate all the time. 
Black played h6 because he wants to put the knight into the game with knight f6. He took knight f6, rook d6, king f7, and some tactical trick. Rook f6, king takes, bishop d4, following h7, getting the rook, and white won. This game was Fischer against Elise Cassis in Mar, de, Mar del Plata, uh, 1960. So, actually, this game is very good and very similar to the previous one. So here we could see quite clear White's plan in this variation. We should check some more games to understand better the position. Now, let's get into bishop e6. White Black tries to get control of the d5 square and is not going for moves like knight h5. Knight e3, the same. And now rook a d8, the most normal move. Rook f d8 is possible as well, but as you remember from a previous game, after rook a d8, after a4, Black sometimes was losing, they were losing a tempo with rook b8, so it's better to have immediately the rook on d8. Rook a d8, queen e2, and now Black plays c4, the most correct extra strategical move in this position. As I said before, now bishop c5 is coming, and black pieces are quite active. Now, there are a few games from Fischer again, and first we will start with knight f5. Knight f5. What's the problem? If black, white plays knight h2, as before, there is an extremely powerful tactical trick for black. This is knight d4. Remember these kind of ideas, because you can win games very easily. c takes d4, e takes d4, and after knight f5, bishop f5, e takes, and bishop b4, following d3, and black is almost winning this position. So with this bishop e6, rook a d8, and c4 idea, we avoid the plan knight h2, knight g4, which was extremely annoying in the previous games. So this is not possible, and Fischer, he, once he played knight f5, and, uh, and later he played knight g5. After knight f5, black plays normal, rook e8, he's not worried. After knight e7, he will take with the knight, and look, the d5 square now is extremely protected. No weakness for black. And then he is ready to play something like knight d7 and knight c5 to get control of the weak d3 square. The position is more or less balanced. Fischer played bishop d5 here, and black played perfectly with knight d7. Bishop e7, knight e7, and knight g5. Again, same idea. Now he's trying to take the bishop, and now Black made a big mistake here because Black had to take on a five with the bishop, but somehow it was not so easy. Simply, he's taking a pawn after bishop a five. It takes a five, h six, knight e four, and knight f five, and it's it's clear that White has some compensation on the light square, for example, after rook ad1, all, everything is in the center, d6 square is a bit weak, but it's not enough compensation, so black had to play like this. In the game, this was in 1970, black played h6, and this move I don't like at all, because you the pawns become weak, and now white has some statistical advantage. Now we will see how Fischer plays excellently.